Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Friendly Friday, a weekly series where we take a look at budget standard or modern decks and this week we're taking a look at the blue-white auras in standard, a deck that's trying to stack a whole bunch of auras on the same creature and ride it to victory. Of course we have a lot of ways to protect that one creature since we're kind of going all in. We also have some ways to draw extra cards and to give our creatures evasion. So let's take a look at the entire deck, starting out with one of the many auras in the deck. We have four copies of Cartouche of Solidarity, single white to enchant our creature, and as we enchant our creature and the cartouche enters the battlefield, we get to create a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token with vigilance, and then the enchanted creature will also get plus one plus one and first strike. And of course, making multiple permanents with just one card also helps us towards ascent, since we do have an ascent card in the deck. Then we also have four copies of Allegiance Landing, a one-man enchantment that when it enters the battlefield makes a 1-1 vampire creature token with a lifelink and then the enchantment sticks around and if we attack with multiple creatures it transforms into a Danto the first fort which can start generating additional vampire tokens. So yet another card that makes multiple permanents with just one card helping us for ascent. Then we also have two copies of Sacred Cat to continue with the one-drop lifelink theme as we get a 1-1 with lifelink and that can also be embalmed from the graveyard for just a single white mana. Then we have four copies of Sky Marcher Aspirant as a 1 mana 2-1 with the sand so as soon as we have 10 or more permanents in play we gain the city's blessing and the aspirant has a flying as long as we have the city's blessing so a very powerful one drop that fits perfectly into this deck since we can very quickly gain the city's blessing thanks to all our enchantments and cards making multiple permanents. Then a very important enchantment in our deck is Curious Obsession, an aura that we can put on one of our creatures giving it plus one plus one and that says whenever the creature deals combat damage to a player we get to draw a card. Then the only drawback here is that if the creature doesn't attack we have to remove the Curious Obsession at the end of turn so we kind of have to keep attacking with the creature we enchant with the Obsession otherwise we will lose it. Then we've got some cards to protect our creatures with. We've got two copies of Dive Down to give one of our creatures plus O plus 3 and Hexproof until end of turn at instant speed. And then we also have three copies of Siren Storm Tamer, which is a 1-1 flyer for a single blue, which is already decent in this deck. And then we can also pay a blue, sacrifice a Storm Tamer to counter target spell or ability that targets us or a creature we control. So very versatile and very powerful in this kind of deck. And then we also have four copies of a Danto Vanguard, which kind of protects itself, since we get a two mana 1-1 one, one that gets plus two plus zero whenever it's attacking, and we can pay for life at any point to make the Vanguard indestructible until end of turn. And of course, when we're gaining life with our Legion's Landing, Sacred Cat, and so on, then we can uh, usually spare four life to make our Vanguard indestructible. Then we've got four copies of Adorned Pouncer, which is a two mana 1-1 one, one with Double Strike, and of course Double Strike stacks quite nicely with all our enchantments, and we can also eternalize the Pouncer from the graveyard to make a 4-4 four, four Double Striking Cat, which is quite menacing, although I guess it doesn't have menace. And then the last creature in the main deck is four copies of Sram, which is a two mana 2-2 two, two, that says whenever we cast an aura spell we get to draw a card, which is very powerful in this deck of course. It is a legendary creature, so we can't have more than one in play at the same time, but uh, we still want all four copies just because he's so powerful in this deck. And then the last enchantment in our deck is Cartouche of Knowledge, two mana to give the enchanted creature plus one plus one and flying, and when the Cartouche of Knowledge enters the battlefield we get to draw a card, so it replaces itself. Then the mana base is pretty straightforward, we have four copies of Irrigated Farmland, which we can also cycle for two mana, and then four copies of Glacial Fortress, which checks for planes or islands to come into play untapped, and of course the farmland counts as both a planes and an island. And then we have a whole bunch of basics, six islands, five planes, and then also two copies of Shivan Dunes, which in a late game we can activate to give all our creatures plus one plus one until end of turn, which is quite relevant when you have a whole bunch of tokens laying around from your cartouches or legions landings. Then taking a quick look at the sideboard, we have two copies of Fragmentize to deal with inexpensive artifacts or enchantments. We have some removal in the form of a Baffling Ant and Compulsory Rest. And then Compulsory Rest is an aura, so combines nicely with Sram as well. We have two copies of Saving Grace, which kind of counts as a combat trick that's useful in racing situations against other aggro decks. 
can kind of take the opponent by surprise. We also have two copies of Squire's Devotion to give one of our creatures lifelink, which is great against other aggro decks. And then we have some counter spells, one spell pierce and four copies of negate. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand looks acceptable. So we could lead with the turn 1 Legion's Landing, and then turn to uh, play the Curious Obsession on it. But I think we're better served being a bit more patient and just playing the tapped farmland first. And then on turn 2 we can play the Pouncer, and on 3 we can Obsession plus Dive Down for protection. And Fortress is also nice here. So let's play the Pouncer. Say go. Opponent on blue-white as well. But they're on the more controlling version. Alright, so this Obsession should be pretty decent. I guess we can use Islands. And might as well attack first, see what we draw, and then play the Legion's Landing if we don't find anything better. Get to draw a card, and get to draw a card again, thanks to Double Strike, so that's a pretty neat synergy. So I think we're gonna play it safe here and just play Legion's Landing rather than a second Pouncer. Opponent could have something like a Baffling End to get rid of the Pouncer, so want to keep up dive down. Instead our opponent just passes, picked up a cartouche. Alright, so I think we're just going all in on this pouncer. Don't see a reason not to. Draw a card, Stram is not bad, so let's attack. And yep, this is quickly spiraling out of control. Alright, sweet. So, next turn we need to worry about Settle the Wreckage, but for now I think we can just safely play the Legion's Landing, which gives us three creatures to transform the Legion's Landing next turn, and uh, I want to save the Cartouche for after we play Sram. Opponent cycles a Sensor, that they didn't get to use this turn, and now we'll see if our opponent passes with four mana up. If they do, I think I'm down with just playing a Strom here. And then putting a Cartouche on a Vampire. Drawing a card with Strom. And cancel. Alright, so that's fine. So now the coast is clear to attack with a Pouncer. Don't need to worry about a Cellar Wreckage. Get to transform Legion's Landing, draw some more cards, and I guess we'll pass. Could play more stuff here, but our opponent's likely to have a few Megates, as they do. So, yep, that uh, resolves. Opponent back up to 5, but we're still not in a bad spot here. End of turn, we can cycle and then just rebuild pretty quickly. So we could eternalize the Pouncer here, but I think I like playing Sram, playing the Pouncer, and then putting a Cartouche on Sad Pouncer, drawing us a card. Alright, so do we want to commit an Aspirant, or do we just call it a day? I think we just call it a day here. Boron does get to transform their Ascanta, and they also have an Arch over Aska, so if the game goes late, we might be at a disadvantage here. And our opponent now is keeping up a whole bunch of mana, so they can have a Settled Wreckage here. So I think we just attack with the Pouncer and the Warrior, which is still enough for lethal, forcing the Settled Wreckage. And then the two basics aren't actually bad when we can eternalize the Pouncer. Keep the Shram to draw some extra cards. Yeah, that seems fine. Yep, yeah, there's a Saddle. So let's get one of each, I guess. And then second main, we can... 
internalize. And I think we also play an aspirant and then say go. Opponent with the Field of Ruin on our Adanto, but we still have another Legion's Landing, so not the end of the world. Opponent basically needs another Fumigate here. Or I guess another Saddle can buy them a turn or two. Opponent cycles a Sensor, so they might be digging for something. And Thomanic Compass, that's not bad against our strategy here. But we do have the Dive Down to protect against it. Alright, so I think the plan here is to play the Cartouche on the Aspirant. Draw a card with Sram. Make a token. And our opponent obviously is going to use the Spires on the Pouncer, so we kind of have to make this Aspirant lethal. But then the Settler Wreckage is going to get us real good. But I think I'm fine with baiting out the Settle here. So we could also attack with a SRAM to kind of force the settle. I think I'm fine with that, otherwise our opponent just starts activating a scant every turn and things don't get better for us. Alright, they do have a second settle. That's fine. Get some more lands out of our deck. And then we can just play a bunch more creatures. And I don't think we can afford to play around a fumigate here as well. Guess we can keep the Strom in hand since the Shafa Junes provides plenty of power to still attack for lethal. Alright, Ascanta gets activated, looking for a Fumigate perhaps. And they do find it, that's unfortunate. And now they'll be able to gain four more life. Well, this is pretty annoying. But uh, I guess we can still Eternalize. Place from say go. Haven't been able to use this dive down despite having it in our opener. Opponent only with sweeper effects and no spot removal. Skanta finds baffling end. Well, I guess we'll get to use dive down finally. Although I guess her opponent still has the spires of Raska. And a cancel on the dive down. But now our opponent is tapped out, but I guess they are still at 9, so we're not going to get there with just a SRAM, but maybe the Cartouche can help. So step 1, alright, stringing together some draws here. Let's just keep going. And I guess that's it. So we can activate Shafat Junes if we want to, just to get in for some more damage. I don't think one damage is going to matter a ton here. So I'm just going to get in for five. Draw a card. And then second main we can play the Storm Tamer. And I guess we can also play the Legion's Landing just to swarm the board. And hope to dodge another sweeper here. Skanta gets activated. And baffling ants. Alright. We do have a Siren Storm Tamer to protect against it. So we could sacrifice a Storm Tamer here. Since we can still use the Shafat Junes on our two tokens to attack for four. And yeah. Opponent's got three mana, so I think this should be enough. So let's activate Shafat Junes. And yep, that does it. Awesome. So I managed to beat Blue White Control after surviving quite a few sweepers. So how do we want to sideboard? We definitely want access to our counter spells here, negate and spell pierce. Could consider Fragmentize, did see some enchantments, but I don't think that's necessary here. 
Sacred Cat's not great here. And I think we can shave some number of Legion's Landing as well. I think we'll just shave a Cartouche and a Legion's Landing and try like this. All right, we're on the draw. Our hand's not great, but keepable. We can cycle the farmland and then we're looking at turn one Aspirant into turn two Aspirant plus Cartouche, which is pretty aggressive. Another land is not great. And the turn to search for Ascanta is gonna be quite helpful. All right, a Durn Pouncer is better than playing another Aspirant here, I think. So let's get in for two. Play Pouncer. Then next turn we can maybe put a Cartouche on it to get in for more damage. All right, we get to untap. So we don't have any way to protect our creatures here, so going for the Obsession could be a little risky. But then again, it's not like our opponent has a ton of actual spot removal in their deck. They mostly have counter spells in this situation. So maybe going for the Obsession on the Pouncer is still fine. They could just use a Cancel on us. At which point we might want to use the Cartouche first. To kind of bait out a counter spell. No, nope, that resolves. I think we're just going for it. Try to draw two cards here to make up for potential card disadvantage. All right, that works. And found another Pouncer. I think we just say go here and pretend like we have access to a dive down rather than committing the Aspirant as well. Although this is a turn where we need to play around Settler Wreckage, so maybe we're better off just attacking with the Aspirant and the Warrior after all. Yeah, it's super likely our opponent just has a Settle here, so let's go to combat. And yep, there's a Settle. Get one of each. And I think we're fine committing another Pouncer since we can Eternalize. And then we'll just cycle a Farmland end of turn, I think. Does leave us a little vulnerable to a potential cast out since we didn't play the Storm Tamer, but looks like they might have a second Settle the Wreckage instead. Alright, so I think we just attack with the second Pouncer here. Keep the Curious Obsession on the first one, still get in for a bit of damage while not overextending into a Settle. I guess we could have considered cycling the Farmland main phase just to see what we draw. But now I'm just going to play yet another Pouncer. And I think we hold on to the farmlands. Fumigate would not be great for us, but at least we get to make a bunch of 4-4s. Four and end of turn we'll cycle. Another Storm Tamer. I think we cycle again. Untap. Find a Sram. Alright, so I think we play the Sram. Play Cartouche on one of the Pouncers. Draw a card. And then I think we just attack with a big Pouncer here. If we're playing into a Saddle, I don't want two Pouncers getting exiled here. So this seems fine. And yep, there's a Saddle. Get an Island. And now we have to consider Fumigate as a potential problem. I think we're just going to say go here could play the Storm Tamer to protect against something like a Baffling End, but uh, then we kind of walk into a Fumigate. Yep, there it is. Still haven't drawn any of our counter spells, which would have won us the game had we drawn any of them. But I guess we'll just Eternalize a Pouncer here and play a Vanguard. Could also play the Storm Tamer, which 8, 11, 12 would present lethal exactly. So I guess that's worth it. So we can make the Vanguard indestructible through another Fumigate. Instead a Regal Caracal, alright. It's pretty good here. Sun Tap, Allegiance Landing, not bad. So let's play that. And I think we just jam with everyone. Transform the Allegiance Landing, get that going. Even their opponent does have Field of Ruin. 
All right, opponent double blocks the Adanto Vanguard. We'll pay four, get in for a bunch. And now the question is, do we play even more stuff or do we just sit on the Adanto here? I think we just unload. Don't really see ourselves beating another Fumigate. Baffling and goes to the graveyard. And Kefnut, the Mindful, is not going to do a whole lot here. End of turn, we'll make a Vampire. This would have been a nice time to draw Negate. If your opponent has another Settler Wreckage, that would be pretty painful. Opponent's got two cards in hand, they already used two Settles. And uh, if we don't make them use a Settle, they can just start activating Kefnut. So we might just want to jam with everyone and hope for the best. We don't have to attack with the vampires on the ground. Yeah, I think we just jam here. Every turn that goes by gets worse for us since our opponent gets the search for Ascanta going and now Kefnut as well. This seems fine. Opponent making some blocks. Uh, yeah, we will pay four. Let's see if they have it. They don't. Awesome. Opponent falls to four. And I don't think there's a reason to eternalize a pouncer. We have more than enough with what we have in play. Kefnut gets activated. Well, let's see what the search for Ascanta finds. All right, Ascanta gets activated. And they find a Fumigate. Do they have land number 5? It's a tap land, so they can't actually play it. And there we go. Awesome. Managed to navigate our way through multiple sweeper effects. Seller Wreckage especially is a tricky one to play around. But we'll be back with the next one. All right, we're on the draw. And this hand looks keepable. We've got our two Pouncers to go with the Obsession, which is quite a nice combo. So hopefully we can get an attack in. Main deck, Authority of the Consoles. Sure. I'm not too worried about that one. Let's just play a tap land, say go. Curious to see if the authority of the consoles is part of some a larger combo or if it's just a main deck sideboard card essentially. Alright, Stram's not bad, so we want to wait until we can play Stram and an enchantment in the same turn. For now we'll just play the Pouncer, which could get Fatal pushed, but that's fine. Doesn't look like a Fatal Push is happening, or at least not yet. Alright, so I think we just attack and play a second Pouncer. Don't want to run Auras into removal spells when we don't have to. Could also play Strom, but I would rather wait until next turn. So let's play another Pouncer. And say go. Opponent tapping out here for Ixalan's Binding. It's pretty good, but luckily we already played out two of our bouncers, and now the window is open for a curious obsession to draw us a bunch of cards. Alright, so I think we just play a Stram and then the obsession. Could have also played the Cartouche and the obsession, which also draws us a card and gets in for more damage. This is also fine since we get to draw a card from Stram. Land is not bad. Let's get in. And perfect. Dive down to protect our threat is exactly what we wanted. So let's say go. And hope our opponent doesn't have a Fumigate here. A Ravenous Chupacabra. Yep, we will be protecting our Pouncer here. And then next turn we can jam this Cartouche. Draw even more cards. Maybe even play a second Obsession. Oof, Storm Tamer is a good one. So we can kind of protect our investment here. Let's see what we draw with Sram. Fortress, perfect. So we get to play the Obsession and then still play Storm Tamer plus activate it. So let's get in there. Draw a million cards. Yeah, this feels pretty powerful. Alright. 
Pawn on false to 9, we'll play Storm Tamer, say go, and end up discarding a bunch of lands, I guess. Guess we can also let go of a Sram and then a land. So what does our opponent do against this? Do they have a Settler Wreckage or a Fumigate? Or perhaps multiple spot removal spells? And the right, our opponent just scoops it up. They couldn't answer the Pouncer. So up against an Asper, kind of mid rangey control deck. Uh, not sure if we want all the negates or the spell peers. Fragmentize seems actually decent against the Ixalan's Binding. We haven't seen a ton of enchantments besides the one man enchantment that didn't really do much. I think we'll just be bringing the negates for now and then taking out Sacred Cats, a Legion's Landing and a Cartouche of Solidarity. Perhaps we also want the Spell Pierce and the Fragmentize, but for now I think we're fine. And this hand looks good. Don't have any protection spells, so it could be a bit weak against multiple removal spells from the opponent. We can choose between the Aspirant or the Landing. I think we'll just go with the Aspirant just because it's it hits a little bit harder. And there's the Authority once again. I think we just play a Cartouche here. And then next turn, even if our opponent kills the Aspirant, we can still play Strom plus a Cartouche in the same turn. And Dive Down is also a nice pickup. But last game, most of our opponent's removal spells were 4 drops. Perhaps they have something like a Baffling Ant here. Instead, another Authority of the Consuls. Opponent could technically still have a Fatal Push, but then I'm not sure why they let us untap. Do we assume our opponent doesn't have the Fatal Push, or do we still play around it? By keeping up Dive Down, I suppose we can just play a Sram. So let's attack for 3 first. Play a Sram. Opponent gains 2, and we'll play it slow here. Opponent with lots of enter the battlefield tap lands. They haven't found their basics yet. We get to untap. So I think we play the Cartouche of Solidarity even though it gains our opponent a bunch of life. Our opponent with a disallow on the Cartouche, but we still get to draw a card from Sram. And we picked up a Cartouche. I think we just attack for five. And then we have to decide whether or not we want to play the Siren Storm Tamer or to just play Allegiance Landing, keep up Dive Down. I don't mind playing the Storm Tamer here. It's a bit worse against Fumigate, but it does add another creature on the board. And this way, if our opponent just has a spot removal spell, we can choose whether or not to use Dive Down or a Storm Tamer. Opponent just passes, negates a nice pickup. So we could attack first, see if our opponent has a saddle and then perhaps negate it. Or we can play the Cartouche, which draws us two cards, and then we can probably find a land. So I think we'll play the Cartouche on the Aspirin still. And we can still use the Storm Tamer or Dive Down to protect. Picked up a second negate. Can we find a land? We can, but it's a tapped one. I think we are just playing this tapped, and then attacking with just these two. To play around a potential settler wreckage. Opponent takes it. So now we have to dodge a fumigate. And looks like it's just an excellence binding, which is not gonna be good enough here. And I think I like using dive down instead of sacrificing the storm tamer just to get in for more damage next turn. And they're actually using it on the storm tamer, but we're just gonna dive down. Danto Vanguard to draw. So here we can play the Legion's Landing, gains our opponent a bit of life back, but sets up the transformed first fort. And we can also still play a Cartouche of Knowledge. And I think we'll be playing that on our Strom actually. And then once the Legion's Landing transforms, we'll also have access to Negate. So I can't really see how our opponent gets back into this, since we have both the Storm Tamer and the Negate as protection, and our opponent will be facing lethal next turn. Still not sure what these authorities of the consoles were all about, 
but I guess we'll take it. So on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and the sands seems pretty good. Got our turn one aspirant, turn two, one of our two drops, and then turn three, perhaps a curious obsession. I guess we could also lead with the storm tamer, but then we still wouldn't be able to use the storm tamer for protection in the turn that we play the obsession. So I think I'm fine just playing the aspirant here. Hits for a bit more. I guess the reasoning for playing the storm tamer turn one is that we could go turn one storm tamer into turn two obsession plus aspirant, but I think we're better off just playing a two drop here. Could be a ramp deck. So I think we want to set up our value play of pouncer into obsession. So we'll get in for two here. Play a pouncer and then hope our opponent can't interact. Ether hub, all right. So our opponent could have anything here. And they're just gonna tap out for a puzzle knot. Interesting. So our opponent, some sort of energy combo deck. But that does leave the door open for Curious Obsession on the Pouncer. And Island is good here as well. Let's start by attacking. Draw two. And deal six damage as well. Alright, not bad. And I think we'll just play either another Pouncer or the Vanguard. I guess we can play around potential removal spells by playing the vanguard here and we're probably going all in on this pouncer so there's no need in playing the second pouncer since the vanguard deals more damage by itself opponent is now keeping up mana but dive down is perfect here could not have scripted it better so let's put a cartouche on the pouncer resolves so opponent might not even have a removal spell here attack with everyone and that's 11 damage right here. Ether Meltdown. Yeah, I think we'll prevent that from happening since we want to draw our cards. Cast out, it gets cycled. That's fine. Hopefully we can hit our land drop here. All right. Let's say go. And uh, yeah, not sure what our opponent can do about this. Four mana. They're at one. They need a pretty specific combination of cards. I guess they technically could have a settled the wreckage here, so we won't be attacking with the Pouncer. Instead, we'll just attack with the Vanguard and the Aspirant. All right, and our opponent scoops it up. So not sure what we're up against. Some sort of energy, multicolor control slash combo deck. Uh, I guess negate is going to be good. We did see our opponent cycle a cast out. Could also add fragmentize, but. Once our opponent casts a cast out, the damage is already done because they remove all the auras on our creature. So what do we take out? Sacred Cat, a few Legion's Landings, and maybe a Cartouche, something like that. Could be that we want Spell Pierce over Negate in this matchup, or that we want some number of Fragmentizers regardless, but I think this is fine. All right, we're on the draw here, and this hand's great. Got a turn one Storm Tamer into turn two Aspirant. And then uh, Legion's Landing might also transform pretty quickly. Shafat Junes I think means we just run out the Aspirant here. Get in for more damage. And next turn we can go Legion's Landing plus Storm Tamer. Or maybe even Aspirant. So let's get in for two. Opponent with lots of deserts, so they're probably playing something like Hour of Promise to ramp. So let's play Storm Tamer. And Aspirant. Say go. Opponent did nothing on turn two. And they're just passing. Stuck on two perhaps. Well, we're just gonna run out this Legion's Landing. I guess we should have tapped our Shafat Junes there. Since now it might be a bit risky to run out the Obsession. Yeah, I definitely should have tapped the Junes there. I guess we can go a turn without using the Obsession just to play it safe. Opponent could have that Aether Meltdown, in which case playing the Obsession doesn't accomplish a whole lot. But now we do get to transform the Landing, which gives us a nice alternate angle of attack. Opponent takes 5. 
And alright, they did hit their third land. So we might still have a game. And there's Spring. So our opponent ramping. Looking for a basic. But that does leave the door open for Obsession. So now we can just play the Obsession on... I guess we could just play it on the Vampire. And then we'll play the Cartouche on the Vampire as well. I guess we could have maybe put the Obsession on the Aspirant and Cartouche on the Vampire. Since now with the City's Blessing, the Aspirant has Flying, so our opponent is probably unable to block it even if they do have an Hour of Promise to make some zombies. Alright, we'll get in. Opponent takes a whopping 8. We get to draw a card. And I think we'll just say go, keeping up the Storm Tamer's ability. End of turn, we might cycle the farmland. And the right, our opponent doesn't have the answers, and our small creatures manage to slip through the cracks before our opponent can set up with their ramp deck. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series, so if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.